Hey guys, uh, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. We're going to be doing something a little bit different this week. Um, generally, when I'm making these videos, I'm already talking to folks who are part of the lifestyle. And you've already kind of decided that self-defense, personal protection is something that is important and significant enough that it's something that you want to take control over. And so chances are you've probably already got a carry permit, you already own your handgun and all that other stuff. This one is going to be a little bit more of an introductory for folks who are just coming around and they're realizing that taking personal ownership of their safety is something important and it's something that they should be doing, but they don't necessarily know where to start. And I know that for a lot of us, uh, it's we're very eager to, to kind of bring more people into the fold. And anytime somebody shows that glimmer of interest, we want to, you know, kind of, it's the Aladdin whole, whole new world thing, and you're giving them this 30,000 foot view of everything that they have access to, which is great. You got to keep in mind that for the absolute rank novice who six months a year ago the idea of just being responsible for their own protection wasn't even on their radar going from that to gun ownership can be a pretty significant divide sometimes so um there are some folks who will take the attitude of, okay, well, whenever you're ready to buy a gun, call me, and otherwise, you know, best of luck to you in the meantime. You know, I don't necessarily think that's the best route to go. I prefer to give folks some baby steps so that that way they have something to work off of. And then as they progress and as they develop, hopefully they'll get to the point where we can get them into some of the, the more advanced stuff. But in the same vein, there are some folks out there because of just the way they're wired that it ain't for them. They just don't have the temperament or they don't have that will to fight. And that doesn't strip them of their right to personal protection. Not to mention the fact that... Uh, you know, with we just came off of Thanksgiving, we've got uh, you know Christmas and all the other holidays that are coming up. You've got family get-togethers, and if you are already the gun person within your family circle, chances are that in the span of a, a, a weekend of family function, you're not necessarily going to be able to give somebody enough information to where they're going to be able to walk out that door and be as safe and responsible a gun carrier as you are. So that's why I'm making this video, is really just as a primer, because this is some of the stuff that I've done for friends and family members who have come to me and said, hey, I'm realizing that this is something that I should probably take a more active role in. I don't know where to start, and I don't necessarily know if I'm going to get to the point of owning a gun. Not to mention the fact that if you don't own them already, now is a rough time to start. Um, so, it branches out into kind of two different camps. You've got the gear side and you've got the knowledge side. The really nice thing about this is that neither of these requires huge investments. You're not going to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars trying to get set up to where you can effectively protect yourself. Now, you know, there are certainly more optimal tools uh, that come in further on down the line, but that's not what we're talking about here. The first one that you've heard me harp on before, and I will literally hand this to anybody, is a can of pepper spray. Um, I don't think that there is a self-defense instructor out there worth listening to at this point that doesn't advocate carrying OC for personal protection. Number one, in five or ten minutes, 
I can give somebody a pretty decent primer on access, deployment, how it's supposed to work, and be comfortable with them carrying it out in the world. The other big advantage is, is that this has a much lower risk and liability threshold with it than um, lethal tools do. Plus it can go places that lethal tools can't. Um, especially work environments, things like that, where pepper spray is virtually never viewed as a weapon. So it's a big plus. Uh, not to mention the fact that they're relatively inexpensive. The, the Palm OCs are like 12 bucks a pop. Uh, I got a discount code with them for 10% off. So I am far more willing to kind of hand these out to friends, family, and even casual associates than I am reaching into the gun safe and giving somebody a loaner handgun. So there's there's just a, a, a higher degree of accessibility to it. Um, plus, people are not necessarily going to be scared to carry or use this like they would with a lethal tool. The other big one is going to be a decent quality flashlight. Now, no, I'm not expecting a, a newbie to go out and spend a couple hundred bucks on a mod light. Uh, hell, I barely chose to do that myself. So, um, but again, a decent quality light for, you know, what, 60 to 100 bucks, depending. Um, so between the two of these, you're well under $100. And if you're living a normal, relatively low risk profile lifestyle, this is going to equip you to address a strong majority of what you are likely to encounter. Now, yes, you're going to hear people say it's not the odds, it's the stakes, but that's going to be its own video. Um, realistically, for people that are not about this life, this is a good place for them to start because you've heard my anecdote of my time in New Orleans where I was able to basically dissuade what I'm certain was going to be a strong arm robbery just by shining a flashlight at the guy. Paul Gomez likes to say uh, that enough force used early enough can prevent you from having to use more force later. This, for a lot of circumstances, can be enough force. So it's a great place to start, and it's accessible to a lot of folks, even with what's going on right now. On the knowledge side of the equation, Claude Werner over at the Tactical Professor and Greg Elifritz at Active Response Training put out so much amazing free content on these subjects that um, and if you're not following them already, you absolutely should. And I'll go ahead and link to them down below. It's going to take a little bit of research to find the most relevant and, uh, and, and kind of germane essays and articles that they've got, but there's a lot of it there. And if it's not directly relevant, it will at least point you in the right direction to the other resources that uh, that may be useful. In terms of reading materials, this is where I think, you know, it's it's the, the, the mind over any weapon kind of mentality, because with the right mentality, I'm not going to say mindset, but with the right mentality, if you understand that your personal security requires active involvement from you as opposed to just the the live and let live philosophy of I'm not a bad person, I'm not hurting anybody, so nobody's going to want to hurt me. If you take an active involvement in your own personal security, then that's already setting you up for success because you are taking measures to not fit into the template of victim selection. Um, again, to bring in uh, Dr. William April, he always used to say, if it's not a yes, it's a no. So if you're taking measures to not look like a yes, that's a good thing. The best places to start with that are going to be Gavin DeBecker's The Gift of Fear. Uh, I think everybody should read it. I've talked about it briefly in some previous videos. And it really helps to kind of get over this social conditioning that we have of suppressing the little voice in the back of our head that tells us that somebody's creeping us out because you don't want to appear rude. 
So um, that's a, a very reductive overview of it, but grab the book, check it out, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Another one that I think um, is worth reading is gonna be Varg Freeborn's Violence of Mind. This is gonna be a little bit more intense, uh, but it's still definitely worth reading. It is great for helping to frame and establish your mindset as well as frame and establish your mission. It gives some great insight into actual felony culture and, and the victim selection process. So it's kind of the, the, the cheat manual that pulls back the curtain and, and gives you a peek at the other team's playbook. Um, like I said, Varg is a little bit more intense, so if you're dealing with somebody who's got kind of fragile sensibilities, I wouldn't start them off with this. But um, once they're kind of warming up to the idea, it's definitely worth checking out. So for you know 50 bucks of reading material and 100 bucks worth of hardware, you can easily set somebody up for success. And uh, you know, I, like I said at the beginning of the video, Anytime somebody shows interest in this, we're very eager to bring them in and show them all of you know what's what's out there for them. But you got to keep in mind that that can be very overwhelming for people who are new to this space. And worse than that, it can paint a picture of so many insurmountable obstacles that if you're not careful, you can paint this picture of having to live and breathe this lifestyle 24 seven in order to even have a hope of success. And that's not what we want. We wanna make this as accessible for people as possible. So if you don't know whether or not guns are for you, or if you just don't know where to start in terms of setting yourself up to be safer, these are great tools. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please give the video a like and subscribe. If you are uh, watching it on Instagram, same deal. Same on Facebook. We've got some great conversation going in the Facebook group. And I will catch everybody next week. Thanks and take care.